Today, I don't have a bunch of quick tips to show you, but rather, I want to go a little deeper. I've been putting content on this channel for over two years now, and for those of you that have been around for a little while, I feel like we're at that level. Anyways, I want to convince you that money management or wealth isn't really about math or having the perfect budget or understanding credit in just the right way. At its root, it's about psychology. First of all, studies show, psychologically speaking, that money isn't just a piece of paper that's promising something you're gonna get in the future, which you kinda think that it would be, right? But in reality, if you were to give somebody a candy bar or a phone, it actually triggers the same part of the brain as if you were to give them money. Versus, if you were to promise somebody a candy bar or a phone, that's a different part of the brain. Studies also show that buying is more emotional than it is mathematical. So let's say Susie. Remember Susie from our first video? Well, let's say Susie's going shopping for a new computer, and she doesn't need anything fancy, she's looking for something fairly basic. So she goes to the store and they have three computer options. The first one is this $400 computer. It's super basic, but it seems to do everything that she needs it to. But then just so she can cost compare, she looks at another computer. It's a little bit more expensive, it's $500, and it does a little bit more than the first computer, but it's really nothing that she actually needs. So she's still kind of leaning towards the first computer. But then she sees a third computer that's just it's this like amazing computer. It's $1,400 and it has tons of bells and whistles that she obviously doesn't need. Well, the typical buyer, Susie in this example, will look at the three computers and they'll think, well, you know, I think I'm going to go for that middle $500 computer. It's way cheaper than the super expensive computer that I was looking at, even though it's a little bit more than the cheaper one. When in reality, all they actually needed was that $400 computer in the first place. Okay, one last weird thing. They've done tests to show that people will rate the taste of wine higher if they think that it costs more. And what the test showed is that only true wine critics are the ones that know the difference between a really great wine and a just okay wine by the tasting it alone. And so what they did is they took a bunch of different wines of different qualities and they gave them to different people and they told them that some cost more and some cost less regardless of their actual cost or value. And people rated the wines that cost more higher in taste than they did in the wines that cost less regardless of the actual quality of the wine. What's really crazy about this one is that when they scanned their brain they found that people actually enjoyed the more expensive or the wines that they thought were more expensive. They enjoyed those more than they did the wines that they thought were less expensive. How weird is that? Which goes to show that money plays a huge effect on our psyche. Added cost adds to our perceived value, if you will. Okay, so what does all this actually mean for someone that struggles with money versus someone that seems to have it all together? Well, actual income versus real expenses obviously plays a huge role in the whole thing, but let's back it up a little from there. And what I've seen over and over again is that people tend to make decisions based on what makes sense, quote unquote, versus using actual numbers to play it all out. For instance, in the computer example from earlier, the shoppers seem to make a financially wise decision by buying the $500 computer versus the $1,400 computer. But if they really only had $400 in their budget for a computer, then they still went $100 over budget and they're still gonna end up with NSF fees in their account at the end of the month. Okay, so maybe it wasn't as bad as buying the $1,400 computer. Great for you, you're not gonna go into tons of debt over it but it still wasn't as good of a decision as buying the $400 computer. Another habit that I see people fall into is they tend to think that because they have a full-time job, they should be able to cover all their bills if they don't live super extravagantly. But the thing is that your salary is what it is and your bills are what they are. And it's worth your time taking a moment to investigate whether your salary actually covers your bills because you may find out that you need to get a second job or maybe you need to get a different job, or there could be a way that you could lower your bills even more than they already are. Okay, but how does someone go from being a spender to being a saver? I would argue that it comes down to how you perceive money. I have always found that I do my best saving when I'm trying to save for that next dollar amount, or basically to build my wealth, as opposed to trying to cut costs. See the difference? A lot of people will put money aside for something they're trying to save for, for instance a car or vacation or whatever, but you're not really saving as much money as you could be and you'll probably find it heart-wrenchingly painful when it comes to saving for things that you actually need like a rainy day fund, which will come in handy. I promise it. 
Have you ever found yourself thinking, oh wow, I just had all these unexpected expenses come out of my account. Why am I such an unlucky human? I hate to break it to you, but in reality that literally happens to every adult on the planet. The difference is that some people plan for it, while other people are surprised by it. That means that if you're at a restaurant and you're trying to decide whether or not to add guacamole to your sandwich, you're thinking, well, okay, I could do without the guacamole and then I'll have more money for if my car happens to die sometime in the future. Or I could just put the guacamole on my sandwich and hope that my car doesn't die in the future and I'll enjoy a taste of your sandwich. See, that's kind of that cost-cutting mentality. However, if you're just saving for the sake of building wealth, then you don't have to worry about all those little things you're saving for and it's less painful. You're just thinking, future me is someone that has $1,000 in their account. That'd be pretty cool. So, I don't need that guac, I'm a money saving thousand air. See the difference? It's not that you're having to give up all sorts of things so that you can be responsible. That's no fun for anybody. You're already responsible. You're just living like a thousand air does. And once you reach a thousand dollars in your bank account, then you're saving for two thousand dollars, and then three thousand dollars, and so on and so forth. And you might be surprised that you actually have money for vacation when it comes up, but you also have money for when your car dies. So turn it all around. Live like you're building wealth, not like you're having to give up everything you used to like in your life. Every spending opportunity is an opportunity to save. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you liked it. If you did, you can subscribe or like the video below. And if you have any ideas for how you think about money and things that help you save or things that help you spend wisely, put them in the comments of this video. We'd love to hear from you guys. See you next time.